Okay, so this is going to be my first time going live and not going live in general, but just going live on this platform. But I'm sitting here today and I am writing a pitch to a friend who is an editor at a newspaper. And as I'm writing this, I'm talking about my podcast and I'm talking about the fact that this month is Emotional Wellness Month and how my podcast uh, just plays into that, right? And so while I'm doing this, I'm sitting here and I'm thinking, you know, I think sometimes that as creators, we have to justify why what we do is important and why someone else should pay attention to it. And I started to put in a portion that basically led to the fact of alluding to, you know, black women podcasters are, you know, marginalized, are not necessarily taken as seriously. And in a lot of times I think about some of the things that I'm having to write into this pitch because of the title of my podcast. And so I'm Chisa Pence Brown. My podcast is called Real Ass Affirmations. And Real Ass Affirmations is the shit you need to say to get you through your day. Now, this podcast does focus on mental wealth, which is my concept of being confident as far as being physically, mentally, spiritually, and financially wealthy. And then that is something that to me is not a foreign concept, but to other people, they're missing pieces of their lives, which is why they then come to my podcast. So when you think about the idea and the concept of affirmations in the first place, one of the things that I think about is it is power in saying I am whatever it is. I am something. And when we think about that, that is one of the reasons why people love affirmations, because it gives them that feeling that they can do something. And that's one of the things I've always been about with every platform and everything that I put out. So I'm thinking today, you know, when we want to get heard and we use curse words and we are in a position where, um, you know, sometimes people don't take us seriously. It's one of those things where you have to really look at the ability of other people to be able to just go out there and do what they want, be who they want to be and start a platform. And then all of a sudden it blows up and they get millions of dollars. But you don't see this typically happen with black women. And that's the same thing that happens in relation to our businesses. That's the same thing that happens in relation to us having the ability to get access to funding. And so I just really thought about the concept of saying, you know, what is the, what is the barrier that happens with black women podcasters? And I think that, you know, I've come up with some possibles. One is that we do what we do because it is fun and we just want to express ourselves and we do want to be creative and we want to let the world know our perspective. And that's great. But oftentimes we don't take the time to monetize that perspective. And as you know, black culture rules the world and black culture does not run without black women influencing it and being the catalyst that is necessary for everybody else to be able to create their trends. And I mean, you can go all the way back to the beginning of civilization and there are people that would argue any of this, but I posit that if black women didn't exist, the world would be bland. And I literally mean that from a melody perspective, okay? So even if you just count that, but the swag, the the variety, the the just the the beautifulness, the everything that is the essence of black women gets to be relayed to you when you listen to our podcast, when you listen to what we have to say. And the thing is, you can listen to women from all around the country, and of course you will find similarities. But depending upon where a woman is from, you'll also find things that are going to be akin to her individual experience. You're going to find things that relate to where she grew up, how she grew up. And of course, there again, still will be commonalities, but there will also be those nuanced differences that give you the experience of a different black woman. And there are plenty of black women who I don't identify with, but guess what? I'm still going to champion them. I don't have to identify with you just because I'm black, but I do think that just because I'm black, that there should be a bigger support system. Now, a lot of times people like to talk about division and colorism and all of that but listen the biggest color that we all need to be worried about is green 
there is value in what we do. And we've seen that a lot of social media platforms tend to undervalue, uh, you know, just black creativity as a whole. And then I think oftentimes black woman creativity, we are nurturers and we want to give the world. Right. But we also need to understand that you have to give up something to get something. And oftentimes I think we just don't necessarily know our worth. And so maybe we don't put a value on it. I know that until I decided to get serious about my podcast, it was something that I did because I wanted to. And, you know, one of the things I think about is, yeah, it's great to do something because you want to. But if you do it with a purpose and you do it with a plan and you match that with passion, you're unparalleled. The opportunities that exist for us to be able to not only share our voice, but to make an impact in our communities. I mean, you can't. You can't stop. You have to keep going. You have to do what I like to call with my other company, give it to the people. So Real Life Affirmations is a part of my company, Give It to the People. It is where we do our podcasting, where I get the opportunity to be able to be freely, completely myself and to give advice as far as on Real Life Affirmations. Now, one of the things that I love about this is that it's not just touching Black women. Even though, I mean, I felt like if I was speaking, I would be speaking to people who look like me. But what I recognize is women still have commonalities. And there are women who love how I talk. There are also people who, you know, don't like it and maybe say they won't listen because of the cussing. But I think that what people realize, the people that love me anyway, the people that love the podcast, is that sometimes you need a little cussing to make a point. Sometimes you need a little cussing to have that impact. Right. And so when I think about that, I, I think about, you know, talking to a young lady. It was a group of ladies. Um, I'm at a brunch and this one young lady, you know, I'm telling them what I do and everything. And then afterwards, she's like, oh, well, you know, I help build confidence, too, but I'm a Christian <laughs> coach. Right. Confidence builder. And I'm just like, OK, so what makes you feel like just because I cuss that I'm not, you know, Christian or religion and you don't know what my religion is. So I think that oftentimes as women. What happens, and, and it could be specifically black women, and this was a black woman who said this to me, but I think what happens is we want to compare ourselves. Um, you know, we want to look at what the other person is doing and then oftentimes try to do it better, which just to me makes sense because how else are we going to get successful if we don't do that? But when we really talk about our impact and our ability, it is to me a power of being able to coalesce that energy and then share it with other people. So what I decided to do was to create a platform within my own platform and do a small series that's called Affirm That Ish. OK. And, you know, part of that is because um, when people listen, they each get a feeling, but they listen where they're at. Right. Whatever's going on in their life, there is always an episode that is going to resonate with them more than others. So I told my listeners, please tell me, you know, which episode was your favorite. And then I want you to come up with your own affirmation so that we can use that to empower more women. And I think that once I saw, you know, the people that have responded, I'm just in awe of, you know, just some of the things that they've come up with and the way that it makes them feel. So I think that it's our job as black woman podcasters to tell our truth, to be as authentic as we can possibly be in our experience. But also, if you feel like you need to drop a motherfucker, you know, if you feel like you need to say shit bitch, whatever it is that you feel you need to say to get your point across, do that and don't be scared of it. And you know why I say that? Because it's wonderful how white men, and I'm just going to be specific and be blunt, don't get that same type of criticism when they curse, right? They're taken seriously. Ooh, they're extra. They're great. Ooh, they're, they're you know, a fire starter. We're fire starters too. And as black women podcasters, I'm not telling that you that you have to cuss. I'm saying that's what I do. That's where I'm comfortable. And this is not a lack of intelligence. This is not me not being able to find words for something else. This is sometimes the word that you use is the word that you need to use, right? So I want to just encourage you with this to be able to go ahead and pitch your story to other people who need to hear what you have to say. Because it's not just about your listeners, it's about the people who haven't listened yet, who still need to understand your perspective and need to know that your podcast exists. So shoot your shot, which is one of the episodes that we actually have in Real Life Affirmations. Shoot your shot. 
put your stuff together and get your business in order and make sure that you have your media kit and make sure your website is up to date and make sure that people know about you. It's time to give it to the people.